Hello everyone. In this lesson, we're going to look at creating scripts in Linux. So this is chapter 11. So let's go ahead and get started. In this chapter, we're going to talk, first we're going to describe how you can begin a shell script and what syntax you use within the file. Next, we'll look at how to use some simple commands within that shell script. And then in the next topic, we'll look how to pass a argument via the command line script and then how to process that. Following that, we'll look at how to use variables within your scripts. We'll also look then at conditional expressions, which are if statements within your scripts. And they'll also look at using loops and functions. Functions allow you to modularize your script and make it easier to maintain. And then finally, to round out this chapter, we'll look at how you can set the script's exit value when you exit the script and then how you can chain that together with other commands to process later. So let's go ahead and start by looking at the basics of a shell script. The basic syntax of a shell script is very simple. It starts with a special line which starts with a hashtag followed by the exclamation point or you can refer to it as pound bang, shebang, hash bang, etc. So when you actually then put that, that first line is then followed by a series of commands. To actually execute the script, you can use the command bash and then the name of your script, or you can use the change mod command to add an executable attribute to your script, and then you can just invoke it by name. So let's go ahead and look at a simple example of that. So if you use cat, which again will type out the contents of an executable, or of any file rather, then you can look, see the contents of the world's simplest hello world script, and that's how we always start in any language is hello world. We'll look at the hello world script, and the first line is our pound bang, along with the bin slash bash statement, followed by echo hello world. And so when you run that, or you execute that with bash hello script dot sh, you'll see hello world printed out to the screen. So let's go ahead and look at an example of how we'll run that in the command line. Okay, so I've gone ahead and created a hello world script. So just to show you what that looks like, I'll use the cat command and I'll go ahead and type out the contents of this file. So you can see the first line of the bang exclamation point bin slash bash and then the command echo hello world. So I'm going to go ahead and execute this by typing in bash hello world dot sh. And you can see now that it executes and prints out hello world. If I try to execute this directly, I'm going to go ahead and try that. Oh, I made a small mistake there. Let me go ahead and put the period in here. I'll go ahead and ex try to execute that. And you'll notice that it fails. That's because if we look at the file and we do a directory here, you'll notice that it has no execute permission. So we would use the change mod command to go ahead and add the execute permission and then we can go ahead and execute our script. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and execute our change mod command. So the syntax is change mod plus x in the name of our script and it will go ahead and add the execute attribute to that. So if I go ahead and type in ls-l you'll notice that now the execute attribute has been added and now I can simply execute the script by using its name using the, um, the relative path notation. So I'm using the dot for the current path slash and then the name of the script. And that'll go ahead and execute it. So that's really hello world and how to set up, one, how to enter the commands into the file, how to execute it from the bash script, and then how to add the execution attribute and then execute it from the command line. So let's go ahead and move on to the next part of the lecture. So the next area we'll cover is if you get an error message for a particular command saying no such file or directory, it simply can't find that command in your current path. And so you can use the command which, following by the name of the command, and it will try to locate that command for you. Again, once you have that opening line that indicates that it's a shell script, then you can follow it with a number of shell script commands. You can use any of the file manipulation commands, such as ls for directory listings, mv for moving files, cp for copying files. You can use grep to look through files and find to locate files on the, uh, on the system. 
Then you can also use commands for cut, said, echo for typing out results to the screen, and mail to go ahead and send uh, files through the mail system. If you have any questions on any of those commands, you can look at those through the man pages and look at more details of what those are. So another example script is we're going to go ahead and try to pass something along the command line. So you can do that with the following syntax. We'll have this hello you.sh and you'll notice that it echoes dollar one. So dollar one is a special variable that indicates it's the first variable that's passed on the command line. So if you look at the next section then you'll see that Fred is passed on the command line and when you execute this it'll simply type out hello Fred. Same with Sally. So let's go ahead and look at an example of that and see how it works on the command line. Okay so let's go ahead and look at our script for hello you. So I'm going to go ahead and type out this script so you can see the contents that matches what was on the presentation and now I'm going to execute it by issuing the command with bash the name of our script hello underscore you dot sh and then I'm going to pass in my name. So a pretty simple script but it pulls then from the first argument position of that command line argument and then prints it out to the screen. Very simple to do, but it illustrates how you can pass in arguments to a command line, which is uh, to a shell script, which is a very powerful concept, and you can use it to do all kinds of complex processing and combine shell scripts with other shell scripts and chain them together. So let's go ahead and move on to the next area. So let's look at an example of passing in a command line. In this example, we're going to run a script and then we're going to pull off the first command line argument to add a user to the system. Then we're going to set the password for that user to that same username. So the username and password are the same, which I should note you would never do in a real production system, but this is just an example of how you can pass in arguments. And then you can use that argument further on down to create a home directory, to set the proper file for permissions for that, and then finally to change the ownership of that. We'll go through these commands a little bit later, but here's an example then of how you might pass an argument and what you might do with it. In this next example, we're going to look at how you would use variables in the script. So we have our, our contents of myvar.sh with our typical first line for the executable setup, and then I'm going to set a variable equal to Fred, and then I'm going to use the syntax with the echo command to print out the variable, and I use the syntax with dollar and then the name of the variable, and so when I execute that script, then it will print out the contents of the variable and not the string dollar me. So it'll use the contents of the variable to print that out. So that's pretty straightforward. In this next example, we're going to look at how you would read into a variable. So in this script of myvar.sh, it's going to issue the echo command to prompt you to enter in your name. So it prints out the line, what is your name? It prompts you. And then it reads the, co the contents into the me variable. And then it's the same syntax that we saw in the, other, in the previous script where it prints out the variable. So it says hello and then your name. So if you go ahead and you execute that and your name is Sally or you type in Sally, then it's going to answer with the hello Sally. So another straightforward example, but yet another illustration of how you can use variables within your script. Next, we're going to look at conditional expressions. And so you can look at the status of a particular command or the exit status of a, of a shell script and then evaluate that. So if you echo the uh, dollar question mark, it will show you the exit status of the previous command or the exit status of a shell script. And so that, that exit status can be either zero or one. If it's one, then it had some type of problem executing this. In this instance, we're looking at the existence of the file of lowercase passwd, which does exist, and then the existence of the uppercase password, -S -S I can't spell today, but you can see then you can test the status of that, and you can also test the status of the last command in your shell script to see if your shell script was successfully executed. That way you can layer uh, a layer of logic on top of your shell script 
to make sure that everything executed properly and if it didn't you can clean that up in an error condition. So going on a little bit further you can have a syntax with an if then syntax and so the syntax is using if dash then if and then the command excuse me and then followed by then so if this command evaluates to true then the additional commands are executed and closing off this statement is if spelled backwards or fi and so that's the syntax of that so let's go ahead and look at an example of how you would put that in a script in this case the the dash s file is true if the file exists and has a size greater than zero so we're looking for the existence of this file called slash temp slash temp stuff and if it is it'll say that the file is found and the script is aborting and then it goes ahead and exits the script and notice the matching if and the action uh, matching fi the indention is for readability for these scripts so that you know what what the level of logic it is and this is very common not only in shell scripting but computer programming as well to indent the code so that you can have readability around this now we'll look at some more variations of the if-then construct. So not only can you have a single operation, but you can logically and operations together. So in this syntax, you use the, the double ampersand to and the conditions together. And so that in that case, you need both conditions to be true in order to execute that logic. Similarly, you can use or, and that's with the two pipes put together. And so this will evaluate true if e either of these conditions happen to be true. So let's go ahead and look at some more syntax of this. So in this case, we're looking at the and condition to see if the, the variable me is set to Sally and we're looking for the existence of the uh, it's set password file. If that is correct, if both of those evaluate to true, then the script will echo all is right with the world. There's also uh, an if-then uh, if then else syntax, which is also common in many programming languages as well. So the, the syntax is evaluating the condition. If it evaluates to true, the command is executed in the, in the then part. Otherwise, in any other condition, the other commands are executed. So that is the general syntax for that. So if we look at a concrete example of this, then we'll, we're going to look again for the existence of this temp slash temp stuff file. If it's if it's there and it evaluates to be true, then we're going to echo out this string saying that we found it and we're boarding, we're exiting the script. Otherwise, if that file is not there, it's going to go ahead and create um, that directory. So pretty simple syntax, but really a concrete example of how the if then else construct works. There's also a case syntax. So a case statement executes on a number of different conditions. So not just two conditions, you can have up to N conditions. So you may have a whole series of things you're, you're evaluating and do a particular action based on whatever that case is. So let's look at an example here. If, if we have our case statement here and we're reading in your name, if it's Fred, it's gonna echo, go away, Fred. If it's Sally, it's gonna echo, hello, Sally. And then the wildcard matches anything else. And so it says, hello, hello, whoever you are. And so the script in action to execute this uh, will show you that following syntax. So I've gone ahead and set up an example of this. So I'll go ahead and type out this script, your name, to the screen. So I use the cat command. And let's go ahead and execute this now and see how this works. So I'm going to go ahead and run our script with bash your name.sh. I'm going to put in my name. So it should come back and says, hello, whoever you are, because it doesn't evaluate to either one of these matches. So if I run the script again and I put in Sally, right, that condition matches and then it echoes out, hello, Sally. So the case statement then evaluates the variable and then finds the appropriate match among a number of different items. So a very flexible command for constructing shell scripts. So let's go ahead and go ahead and move on to the next area of our shell script lesson. Next, we're gonna look at how you do loops within a script. So the syntax here is pretty straightforward. 
you use the for and then a variable and a list and then you use the do command that's embedded and then the command is embedded within this do and done matching pair for the loop and the commands itself. So let's go ahead and look at an example of that. So in this example, it's going to have the match of ls of star dot wav or star dot wave and it's going to put it in this variable d and then it'll apply the command a play with the dollar d variable so notice how the dollar d then matches the d in the for loop so this is another syntax here at the bottom that is the same command but it's just a slightly different syntax notice the semicolon with the do here and then the command embedded here. It's the same way of doing something with just a slightly different syntax. There's also a while loop as well. So in this syntax, you use while and then the condition, and that condition has to evaluate to true, and then you're embedding the, the command within the do done loop combination as well. So we can look at an example here where you're being prompted to enter in your name it's testing the, the variable of dollar me that's being read into, and it's looking for the string Fred. So while it's equal to Fred, it will execute this loop. So if you keep entering in then Fred it, with the, the subsequent prompt for the name and then reading it back into that variable, it will continue to, the loop. And when, once you enter in something else, it'll exit the loop and then it'll echo the last name that was entered. So very straightforward syntax of how you can do loops. The other thing that we'll look at in this lesson then is how you can do functions within scripts. And a function is just a logical grouping within a script to make it easier and a little bit more modular. It makes it a lot easier to manage for particularly big scripts so that you can have chunks of code that you execute and reuse. And so if you look at this example, there's two functions that are defined, a do it function and a function check and it looks at the arguments then that are passed into that particular function. In this case, it's going to copy some files with the do it function. In the check function, it's going to look for the existence of the file. If it does exist, it's going to say that, it, that the file exists and it will go ahead and exit. Then the syntax to execute those functions is down here at the bottom. I'm just calling our first, uh, I'm calling the function check which is this function, and then I'm doing uh, executing the do it function. So very straightforward, but a very a powerful way to organize your scripts. The last thing we'll talk about in this lesson then is looking at the exit status. We talked about it briefly earlier in this lecture. You can look at, you can evaluate the exit status of it. And then also inside your script, you can forcefully set the exit condition. So if you have a number of different conditions that you can exit uh, your script with and you want to be able to document that, you could have several different conditions that are either error conditions or success conditions. And then you can set that condition and outside the script, then you can echo that condition by using the echo dollar question mark and it will show you the exit status of that previously executed script or command. So you can document that if you have a very complex script you can use that then to have various success or error codes as you're exiting your script. So that's really it for this lesson that's all for chapter 11. If you have any questions about the chapter please let me know. Those are all the examples, and then I'll also outline what we have for a lab for this chapter as well. Thanks so much, and I'll talk to you again soon in the next lesson. Bye-bye.